Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Moralist tutorial video. My name is Vasily, I'm your Web3 instructor, and today we are going to check the get transfer by token ID endpoint for the Moralist API. This endpoint get transfers of an NFT given a contract address and a token ID. So at the end, we are going to have something like this. Here I'm going to put a contract address, a token ID, let's say one, and the chain by default is Ethereum, but you can select another one, as Morali support a lot of EVM compatible blockchains. So let's click on get transfer. And as you can see, we get the information about the transfers. This specific NFT with the token ID number one has for this contract. So we have the information of the sender, the receiver, the transaction hash. We always can check on a block explorer like Etherscan and also the block number. So if you want to learn how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. If we go back to the API reference and put here a wallet address and a token ID, same as we did on the front end, and click try it, we are going to get a response like this on a JSON format, which has the same information I showed you, including some more you may find valuable. And we can get this response using different programming languages. For today's tutorial, we are using React.js on the front end and Django as our Python backend development framework. So I'm going to keep here on the Python tab, copy the code, and let's try this. Here on my Django project on a new script called services.py, I'm going to paste that code. And as you can see, the code structure is really simple. And we have to provide some parameters. First of all, our API key, this is the time of the video for you to hit pause, go to moralis.io, create your free account and get your free API key. Here on your admin panel on Web3 APIs, you are going to have it. So let's copy this, go back to my code and paste it down here. For the address, let's use the same one I used on the example, the same token ID for the same blockchain and the limit is going to be 10. Let's save this and try to execute it. On the terminal, first be sure you have Morales installed, so pip install Morales. And now let's try to run this script. So python services.py. And as you can see here, we get a similar response as we did on the web page. Of course, this is a terminal output and we want to use this on the front end. And as you can see, with just this small portion of code, we were able to connect to the Morales API and get the information we wanted. Now, we don't want to use always the exact same address and token ID and the chain, so I'm going to transform this to something more useful to us. So basically, I'm going to transform this into a function which is going to take the address, the token ID and the chain as parameters. And with the magic of addition, we have that function ready. We usually are used to also set up this limit as a parameter, but for today's video simplicity, we are going to leave it at 10. Additionally, remember that using your API key into your code is a security risk, especially if you are going to push your code to a code repo like GitHub. So I'm going to transform this into an environment variable as well. So now we can store the API key here on the .emp file. And if you are going to push this to a code repo like GitHub, just don't forget to add this to a gitignore. This function is ready to be used on the backend, so let's do it. I'm going to copy the name, and here on the views, I'm going to import that function, so from .services, import, and the function name. And here I have a new view called getTransfers, which is going to get those input parameters from the frontend through this request variable. So let's set them up. The chain is going to be equal to a request.get.getChain, the same for the address of the contract and the same for the token ID. Now we can use that function. So NFT transfers going to be equal to the function name. And of course, we want to use these parameters. But just to be cautious, we are not going to use positional arguments, but we are going to specify each one of them instead. So chain is going to be equal to chain, address to address, and token ID to token ID. 
As you remember, this function is going to give us this response, but this is a Python dictionary and JavaScript is not able to understand this. So let's transform this into a JSON as well. JSON transfers equal to JSON.doms, the NFT transfers. And the only thing left is to return this JSON transfers. So return HTTP response, and we are going to send those JSON transfers. And that's it for this view. Now we are able to take this and add it to the URLs. So let's copy the view name here on URLs. Let's create a new one. And also we are going to name it because we want to use relative paths on the front end. Of course, for this to work, don't forget to import the views from your app. And that was it for the backend. Now we have this endpoint called get transfers, which is going to trigger this get transfers by id function and it's going to give us this response now we are ready to connect this to the front end so for the front end first of all be sure to have a proxy added on your package.json with the ip address of your django server as we are running it locally is localhost in the port 8000 and be sure to have installed axios with npm install axios now, these input parameters, contract address, token ID, and the chain are related to this param variable I have here on the front end, which has inside of it a chain, an address, and also a token ID. And as you already know, this is the parameters we must send to the backend. So here, on a new function called refresh NFT transfers, I'm going to connect to that endpoint using Axios. So, get transfers question mark and let's send these parameters and the auto completion is good enough to understand what i want so let's do it and we are sending here the chain the address and the token id if everything goes well i want to have a console.log here so console.log of the response this refresh nft transfers is attached to this get transfer button so let's give it a try Let's use the same contract, the same token ID, and as you already know, the chain by default is Ethereum, so let's click on Get Transfers. And as you can see here, we got the response we wanted. And here, on result, we have the information we want, such as the block hash, the block number, the sender, the receiver, the token ID, and a lot more. Now, the only thing left for us is to take this JSON response and show it down here. I already have that code prepared, so I have here, so I have here a variable called rendered transfers on which I'm going to render the token ID, the block number, the sender, the receiver, and also the transaction hash, the same as I already showed you at the beginning of the video. So here, instead of just using a console.log of the response, I actually want to use this set nft transfers and send the rest.data but i want the result over here so let's give this a try let's use the same parameters and get transfers and as you can see here we get the exact same response as we did at the beginning of the video with the sender the receiver the transaction hash obviously is the same token id and the block number of those transactions and this was really easy because, again, remember, we just needed this small amount of code to get all the information we wanted for those transfers. And we get the response in almost no time. How cool is that? That was it for today's video. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the GitHub repo, so don't forget to check out the video description. And also click here to learn more about Morales technology and see more videos. I'm serious. Click it. Do it now. Go ahead, see more videos. You did it? Nice. See you on the next occasion. Bye.